Okay, let's take a look at how to do some examples with electron configuration. So when I'm writing this, I'm going to be using my color periodic table to help me separate the periodic table into subshells, S, P, D, and F. And I'm always going to see um, sets in the configuration that look something like this. I'll have a number in front, and that stands for the energy level, also sometimes called the electron shell. I'm going to have a letter, which is going to stand for the subshell, or the sublevel. And I'm going to have an exponent, which tells me the number of electrons that are currently in that particular subshell. I can relate this to the periodic table in another way. The energy level, or the number in front, I'm going to get from what row I am in. I'm going to get the subshell by what color or what section I am in. And I'm going to end up getting the number of electrons from the number of boxes that I hit in that particular color or section. Anytime I start uh, a new color or start a new row, I'm going to write a new set. So let's take a look at sulfur S. Um, let's locate that on my periodic table. There it is, S. I'm just going to uncircle it so you can see it a little bit better. Whenever I'm doing this, I'm going to read through the periodic table. So where do I start when I'm reading? I start at the top of the page at the left. So that's what we're going to do. We're always going to start at row 1 up here by hydrogen. Okay, so I'm going to write these sets of number, letter, exponent. So I ask myself, okay, what row am I in? I'm in row 1. I'm starting at hydrogen. So I write 1. Okay, what subshell am I in? If I'm starting at hydrogen, I'm in the S subshell. So I write S. Okay, and let's count how many boxes I hit. I hit hydrogen, and I hit helium. I hit two in that particular color, so I get one S2. I start a new row, because I am reading. And every time I start a new row or hit a new color, I have to start something new. Let's say we're going to do AS arsenic. Now let's find arsenic. Here it is on our periodic table. Um, and let's just practice this using the abbreviated or the condensed electron configuration to save some time. So to do that, I can abbreviate with the noble gas in the row above it. So I'm going to end up using argon to abbreviate with. I could put AR in square brackets. And that means everything up to and including AR is included in those square brackets. So I can start after AR, I can start in row 4, the row that AS is actually in. So I look at what row I'm in, I'm in row 4, I'm in the color orange, which corresponds to S, I hit two boxes in that color. Now something special happens with D, and it's something that we just kind of have to memorize. Um, when I hit D, D is actually one energy level back. So even though it's getting filled after 4s, when I hit D, this is actually in the third energy level. So I'm always going to put one less than the row that I'm in when I get to D. So I do 4s2, then when I get to D, I have to remember, hey, that's one energy level back, and put a 3 in front, D. Count how many boxes. I get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 boxes. 10. When I'm out of D, I'm back to normal. So I'm back in the fourth energy level. I'm in the P, the purple color, and I hit 1, 2, 3 boxes to get to arsenic. So anytime you hit the D subshell, you put one less than the row that you're in because it's an energy level back. If I was looking at how many valence electrons or how many outermost electrons I have, my outermost or my highest shell is the fourth shell, so I have 4s and 4p, so I only have five valence electrons, 2 plus 3. The d, because they're a row back or an energy level back, they're never going to count as valence electrons. 
So if I get into the row after, let's say I get into the fifth row, just to kind of practice with this D concept, um, once I get to RB over here, um, this would be 5S2. Then when I get to the D, um, this would end up being 4D10 back to 5P6. When I get into the next row, um, if I notice, see this blue F subshell comes in right after the S. So what happens is um, the 6S is going to go down to the F subshell. And with the F subshell, what's special about that is it's really two rows back. Okay, so the D is one row back or one energy level back, and the F is two. So this would be 6S2 down to 4F14. There's 14 boxes you hit there. Then we go back up to the D, and this would be 5D10 back to 6P. So whenever I get into the F, it's two rows back, D is one row back. There's a lot of anomalies that happen in the F and D blocks. Um, so a lot of the times, for especially for the F block, we're just going to kind of pass through it. Um, and if you get into uh, more depth into chemistry, then you can kind of examine those anomalies in more depth.